Hey guys, so I have seen No Time to Die, the last James Bond film with Daniel Craig. And it's somewhat of a swan song, I guess, sort of, for James Bond. Um, and for Daniel Craig, obviously, it's the last one he'll do. And uh, it, it was fun. Let's just get right into it. The good, the bad, the ugly. Let's get right into it. The good, the performances. Daniel Craig does a wonderful job here. It doesn't feel like he's phoning it in, similar to how Pierce Brosnan felt in Die Another Day. By the bell. He doesn't feel like he's phoning it in at all. He's doing a great performance here. To be honest, anytime I watch a James Bond movie, I want to buy a suit. <laughs> or a tux, doesn't matter. I just, I just want to buy a suit. I want to look good. Like, he makes wearing a suit look so good in this movie. Take away all the cars that he drives, which are, are just great in this film, but his, his suits are, are top tier. Aside from that, Lashana Lynch does a good job as 007. She is a 00. She's a 007 for a certain time in this film. Ben Wishaw does a good job here. Uh, Ana de Armas is great here. Very little of her in this, but she's great. Ralph Fiennes, as always, is great. He, he does a good job as M. Uh, Lee, Lee, is it Lee Sado? Or Leah Sado? She's wonderful here as Madeline Swan, uh, coming back from Spectre. She's great. Robbie Malik, he does a good job here, but we'll get back to him uh, a little bit later. Jeffrey Wright also does a good continuation here of his character, Felix. Uh, he's great. But again, across the board, all the performances are great, and Daniel Craig really leads the show here. Another good is the action. The action is still pretty good here. It is very spaced out, but we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. But what action you do get uh, is, is really good here. It's engaging. It's exciting, uh, as it normally is in a Bond film. Third thing is the music, not the theme. But the music within the film, <laughs> the, the score for this film is really good. It kind of hits you at the feels in a couple of different spots. Brings me to my first bad. The first bad here is going to be the No Time to Die theme song by Billie Eilish. It's horrible. For me, it's the worst. It might be the worst. And that's after Spectre from Sam Smith. That one was horrible. I mean, that movie was okay. It's better than Quantum of Solace. But uh, but that, that, uh, that theme song is bad. This one's worse than that. In my book. It still messes with me that Radiohead didn't get to do the theme song for Spectre because theirs was great. If you haven't listened to that, check it out. I put a link in the description for that. But the theme song is horrible. Uh, so that, that's really all I got to say there. Number two bad thing for me is that uh, the action is very spaced out and this movie is actually pretty slow. There's a lot of talking. <laughs> it feels like a lot of this stuff was set up in the previous films. Uh, but then it feels like they're just kind of rehashing and redoing everything. Thinking about Spectre, again, uh, in totality. Speaking about Blofeld, again, uh, who, again, is played very well by Christoph Waltz. He's not in this very much, but he does very well in the, in the, in the time that he has on screen. But it just feels like they're rehashing a lot of the stuff that they already established in the previous films. Uh, so I expected a little bit more action, but I also expected better character moments than what we got here. That's the only time I felt like it was kind of phoning it in. I don't know if it hurt because obviously this film was delayed because of COVID. So we had a lot of time between this film and Spectre. So seeing some of these characters, it didn't, I don't know, it, it felt like a TV show, like having not seen a TV show for a long time, but not fully being connected to these characters in the way that you would expect. So when I think of it from that aspect, it's kind of a little disappointing. Also, another thing that was bad for me was just how the 007 moniker changes hands a couple of times. It's just weird. It's like, okay, this guy is just a number. It doesn't matter. And they say that a number of times. It's just a number. But it, it changes hands a couple of times. And it's like, okay, why are we spending time on this? Why does this character give James Bond his number later on in the film for really no reason? They haven't really built a relationship in this movie enough. Uh for that to happen. And I won't really go into specifics because I want you to see the movie. I think you still should see it because it's Daniel Craig's last one. You should still check it out. But uh, it's just, it was just weird. So for me, that was kind of a bad scenario. As far as the ugly, I'm going to say it's uh, it's Rami Malek's villain, Safin. Uh, he, he's boring. <laughs> Normally when James Bond finally gets face to face with the main villain, it's kind of a climactic moment, you know, in James Bond films. Uh, they kind of go over their full plan. James Bond tells them how he's going to stop them. And then you have the eventual fight to the death, whatever the case. And this one, it's boring. When Remy Malik finally gives all the details of what he's doing and why, it's just really boring. You learn about his character throughout the film, but he's in it very sparsely throughout. And uh, it's just weird. He doesn't seem menacing at all like other characters. His name you'll probably forget while you're watching the movie. That happened to me a couple of times. I'm like, what is this guy's name? I just kept forgetting. But for me, he's a low-tier Bond villain overall and low-tier for Daniel Craig's Bond villains. None of them have been very memorable outside of Blofeld, and obviously he's coming from a previous, you know, villain that's shown up in the older movies. Uh, but Christoph Waltz just did a great job with the villain there. Not in a great movie, but he was great. And so that's one thing that I think these movies kind of uh 
kind of were missing, like a really great villain to each one. I gotta say this, for the last ugly piece, Daniel Craig's James Bond, for me, as I was watching this movie, I realized he's comparable to Christian Bale's Batman in the Nolan uh, Batman movies. The whole time, he's really just trying not to be a double O. Like he's trying not to be a secret agent. And I kind of noticed that. I didn't realize it until I was like, wait a minute, Casino Royale, he wanted to be with this girl and just get out of there. Quantum of Solace, somewhat the same, but he's, that's where it's kind of like, it's a continuation, so it keeps going. But he just wants to kind of stop what he's doing and just live a normal life. That was a little bit of a bummer for me, so I'm hoping in the next one, like I've always been saying, for Batman, he knows he is Batman, only he can do what he does. For James Bond, it's kind of the same situation. He knows he's the guy. He's the guy to do what he does. This one was a little bit different for Daniel Craig as far as his portrayal of the character. Watching, I was kind of like, oh man, yeah, he's... The whole time is trying to stop what he's doing. It's a little bit annoying. But uh, still a fun movie overall. Again, No Time to Die. The actual theme song is horrible. Skyfall, for me, is one of the best. Diamonds Are Forever is probably number one. Uh, you Only Live Twice is, is is in my top list. Probably even Know My Name, I think. Well, whatever the one for Casino Royale was, that was good. But these uh, this movie overall, it's fun. It, it ends... Uh, it ends. <laughs> I don't want to go into spoilers. Um, there are moments where it does feel like it's kind of a whimper swan song for Daniel Craig, but the totality of the film is actually a pretty good experience. So I would say, hey, when you see the beginning part of it, when he does the little turn and, and he shoots, you know it's a new episode of James Bond, so it's fun. It's going to be a, a fun experience. And so from that aspect, I say, go ahead, check it out. I got a little hype watching that. It's just that as it goes, it's a little bit little bit of a drag in some some aspects so go into it with open mind be ready to have some fun but also be ready to kind of be ready for a lot of dialogue and and discussion (laughs) within the film let me know if you have seen it let me know what you think if you're gonna check it out check it out let me know what you think afterwards in the comments i'm always interested in what you guys have to say hopefully you enjoyed this uh this review of no time to die again i did enjoy it but compared to others, I think Skyfall is still top tier James Bond for Daniel Craig. So that one, I still enjoy the most. <laughs> to my hyper crew, Brian Tidwell, Steve Ohl, Slepnir, Dash Milner, Daniel Lopez, Jonathan Cedarlin, Kratos and William Cooper. Thank you guys so much for choosing that top tier crew. To all my members and subscribers, thanks so much for supporting me in the in the way that you do. It's really awesome that you do that. While you're still here, hit that like button. It does help the channel grow. You can also check out our most popular videos on the channel and you can see our most recent reaction as well. If you've seen all that, I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you have a great day.